Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to Storytime with Miss Crystal. Today, we'll be reading The Berenstain Bears and the Real Easter Eggs. The authors and illustrator of our story are Stan and Jan Berenstain. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this story. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. How about that? said Sister Bear. I got twenty-three valentines at school today. Seven signed with names, eight guess whose, and eight sealed with the kisses. Brother smiled. He knew that there were twenty-four cubs in Sister's class, and that Teacher Jane made every other cub give every other cub a valentine. But Sister was enjoying her valentines so much that he didn't say anything. Besides, he'd gotten quite a few himself. I just love holidays, said Sister. I wish every day was a holiday. Then you could get stuff every day. Oh, said Mama, who'd been listening. Is that all holidays mean to you? Getting stuff? Sure, said Sister. You get turkey, stuffing, and pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving, presents on Christmas, and valentines on Valentine's Day. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that, said Mama, is that holidays are about much more. Thanksgiving is about being thankful. Christmas is about goodwill and peace on earth. And Valentine's Day is about love and friendship. What do you think about that, my dear? asked Papa. Er, where did Sister go? He said, looking around. She went into the kitchen, said Brother. Which Sister had? She had gone into the kitchen to look at the calendar on the wall. She was looking ahead for holidays. She looked at the rest of February, but there weren't any more big holidays in February. Then she looked at March, and she didn't see any big holidays in March either. But then she looked at April, and right there in April was a really big holiday. Easter! Yum! She thought. Coconut eggs, jelly beans, chocolate bunnies. Yum and double yum! That night, Sister fell asleep while visions of jelly beans and chocolate bunnies danced in her head. But it was still winter, and when she woke up the next morning, she forgot about Easter and spring because there was a new blanket of snow covering the earth. Wonderful snow to sled on, to make a fort out of, and make angel wings in. But Mother Nature hadn't forgotten. And while brother, sister, and their friends sledded and made forts and angel wings, she was getting ready for a whole new season. As the winter winds died down and the sun began to ride higher in the sky, signs of spring began to appear. The big icicles of winter dropped from roofs and stuck like swords in the last of the melting snow. Robins began looking for places to build their nests. Blue and yellow crocuses peeked through the softening earth. And it wasn't very long before reminders of Easter began to appear in supermarkets and on television. But it was the big billboard in the town square that got sister and brother really excited about Easter. This is what it said. Coming soon, the giant bear town Easter egg hunt. Don't miss it. All cubs welcome. Prizes, prizes, prizes. Delicious chocolate Easter eggs. Jelly beans, jelly beans, jelly beans. Gigantic chocolate bunnies. Every cup will win a prize. All prizes on display in window of the Bear Town General Store. And were they ever. There were more jelly beans than you could ever count. Sugar trimmed, dark chocolate, coconut filled eggs with sugar roses and violets on them life-sized milk chocolate bunnies, and one chocolate bunny as big as Brother Bear himself. Happy Easter indeed. This was going to be the biggest, best, most delicious Easter ever. Brother and sister were so excited they ran all the way home. Mama was in the treehouse front yard. Sister, said Brother, you tell Mama about the big Easter egg hunt while I go find Papa and tell him myself. Mama, Mama, sputtered Sister. She was so excited and out of breath she could hardly talk. Now, my dear, said Mama, 
I know that what you want to tell me is very exciting, but I'm sure it can wait until you catch your breath. Meanwhile, I've got some exciting things to show you. But Mama, protested Sister. Just look here, said Mama, kneeling down. See these little blue and yellow flowers? They're from the crocus bulbs I planted last fall. They've been sleeping under the snow all winter. Now they're the first to push up through the earth and greet the spring. Aren't they lovely? Yes, Mama, they're nice, said Sister. But Brother and I were just down at the town square, and guess what? But Mama didn't quite hear Sister because she had walked across the yard and was looking closely at a scratchy-looking bush. It didn't look like much to Sister. This is a forsythia, said Mama. It doesn't look like much now, but come the first warm sunny day, it will burst with thousands of brilliant yellow flowers. Surely you remember it from last summer, my dear. Sister did, sort of, and it was pretty, but it didn't begin to compare with those sugar roses and violets on those dark chocolate Easter eggs or those zillions of brightly colored jelly beans. That's when Papa and Brother came running around the house. Papa was just as excited as brother and sister. How about that? cried Papa. How about what? said Mama. Didn't sister tell you? said Papa. There's going to be a big Easter egg hunt on the town square and you should hear the prizes. More jelly beans than you could ever count. Papa, said brother. All kinds of chocolate eggs, continued Papa. Uh, Papa, repeated brother, tugging on Papa's pants leg. Uh, yes, son. I forgot to tell you, said brother. The Easter egg hunt is just for cubs. Just for cubs, said Papa. That's right, said brother. Oh, said Papa. He was more than a little disappointed. Papa was crazy about jelly beans, especially the black ones. Mama sighed. She looked at Papa and the cubs. She was a little disappointed, too. The day of the Easter egg hunt dawned bright and early. Sister, brother, and dozens of their friends were on the town square waiting for Mayor Honeypot to give the signal for the hunt to begin. They had bags and baskets of every shape to gather the eggs. Brother and sister were especially well prepared. They each had a big basket. The better to carry the eggs they would find. When the mayor gave the signal, it was helter skelter, gather, gather, here an egg, there an egg, everywhere an egg, egg. But brother and sister had a plan. Instead of hunting where the other cubs were, they quickly moved into the woods at the edge of the square. Here's a red one, and a pink one, and a green one, shouted sister as she popped the eggs into her basket. And here's an orange one, and a yellow one, and a lavender one cried Brother as he popped them into his basket. A little while later, Brother noticed that Sister had become very quiet. He turned and saw her standing ever so still, looking into some bushes. And here, said Sister in a soft, hushed voice that Brother could hardly hear, are five tiny little blue eggs in a nest deep in the bushes. Ever so carefully and quietly, Brother moved into the bushes and looked over Sister's shoulder at the real Easter eggs. And together they watched as one by one each tiny blue egg cracked open and a tiny scraggly wet baby robin struggled to climb out. From time to time, the mother or father robin came to the nest with food, worms and insects. They took turns putting the food in the wide open beaks of the baby birds. Brother and sister watched for a long time. They hardly moved. It was as if they were under a spell. It was the most wonderful and amazing thing that they had ever seen. They missed most of the Easter egg hunt, but since every cup got a prize, they got some goodies for the eggs they had already gathered. A few chocolate eggs, but mostly jelly beans, which they shared with Papa. They gave him all the black ones. Many of Sister and Brother's friends won the really big prizes, 
but that was okay. The sugar-trimmed chocolate eggs and the giant chocolate bunny would not only soon be gone, they would leave quite a few tummy aches behind. Sister and brother would never forget those baby birds, and the wonder of Easter and its message of new life would stay with them forever. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this reading of the Berenstain Bears and the Real Easter Eggs. If you would like to add this book to your collection, I'll have a link down below in the description box. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you know if there's any uploads that I add. I hope you'll have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon in a couple of days with a new read aloud. Bye-bye!